Hello, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe, where it is the start of fall, and we are looking at a wonderful day. I hope everybody has had a great start to this week. Let's get into today's topic. We are focusing on IELTS speaking part one. Of course, it is the International English Language Testing System. And I will show you some strategies and we will practice for those high band scores. Now, of course, today is not the fourth. It is October the 8th. Our materials are coming from our websites. And these lessons are brought to you by aehelp.com for the academic version of the exam. Prepare with our materials there. And for the general, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. On both of those websites, we do have six original practice exams, a fully interactive course. And we have over 100 hours of video lessons. Hi, Kamlesh. Good to see a member in the class. Those names that you see with green are our channel members. Hi, Saima. Hi, Josh Butter. Josh Butter, what's up with you? I'm doing good. Rothan, Kushbu, Patel, Banu, Sarathi, Raj, Rainiar, Tarun, White Dove. Good to see many students joining in. If you have not downloaded our app for academic IELTS yet, please do so. The shield looks like this. Search for academic IELTS help, and you can use our materials either from the app or from the website for the academic preparation of the IELTS. If you have questions, just send me an email about the exam, about our products. A-D-R-I-A-N, my name, Adrian, at aehelp.com. I'm happy to help. Now, our schedule for October the 8th to the 12th is the following. Today, again, speaking part one. Tomorrow, we start a task two with members, followed by reading. Then, of course, we have lots more great lessons for you. You can check those out on the YouTube community post. And the classes are 13.30 for members and 15 o'clock for everyone chat. Of course, everyone, everyone can watch these members chat classes. You just can't chat um, and uh, if you're not a member. And uh, that's according to Central European time, so CET time zone, okay? Hi, Danish. Welcome back. I hope you're feeling much much better now getting over a cold that is that time of the year students let's get into it let's warm up our speaking muscles so again this is a speaking class chatting typing thumb typing that's all fantastic but do practice your speaking say questions sentences aloud repeat me i speak with a clear west coast canadian accent so again, speak and repeat. All right, those are very important steps for success in the speaking section. Um, so you walk into your exam, number one, be confident, okay? You're not the first person that day likely, you're not the last person, you're probably not the best student, you're probably not the worst student or a candidate. Uh, for that examiner. So just be confident. Be yourself. Focus. Okay. You're not going for a chit chat. You're going to show your English level. You paid good money. The examiner is there to do a job. Don't worry about what they look like or if they're coughing, sneezing, scratching their head, looking at you funny. Just focus on yourself. Be confident. And the examiner will welcome you. They'll ask you to sit down and then they will ask you for the ID that you use during your registration. They will say, may I see your identification? Uh, what is a good answer for that? May I see 
your identification. Satisfying time says, yes, absolutely. Here it is. Please have a look. It's really nice and natural satisfying time. So satisfying time says, absolutely. Uh, where was it? Let me see the exact words. Those were some good word satisfying times. Yes, absolutely. That's how you started. That was good. Um, so satisfying time says, yes, absolutely. Absolutely is definitely natural. A lot of native speakers use that. Yes, absolutely. Here it is. Please take a look. The reason why this is especially a good way to respond is because it shows confidence. So when you respond by saying, yes, absolutely, here it is, please take a look. It helps you feel confident and it shows confidence, that kind of response. So that's great. Thank you for sharing that satisfying times. Juan Pablo says, sure, here you go. Um, there you go is okay, Juan. Here you go is a little bit better because you're close proximity to each other. Fahim Haider uh, says, yes, certainly. Here it is. Uh, Kamlesh says, yes. Certainly, please have a look. So lots of different ways to say this, students. Practice different ways so that you sound natural and confident. Now, when the examiner has your ID, they will match your name, your ID number, with their paper, okay? And their next question will always be, what is your full name? So give me a nice answer for this one. What is your full name. Saab says, my full name is Saab Chauli. Please just call me by my nickname, Saab. Okay. Uh, your first name, Saab, and your nickname seem to be the same, Saab. So if it's maybe my pronunciation of it, then that's okay. But if it's the same name, just say, call me by my given name or first name. It's not your nickname. Okay, if your actual name is Saab. And students, nickname is one word. Okay. All right, Cheng Hung, good to see you in class. You're being very studious. That's fantastic. You will improve. Uh, Cheng Hung says, my name is Tsai Cheng Hung. Uh, please just call me Hung. Very good. Okay. Amara Wadi says, my given name is Amar and my family name is Wadi. Please just call me Amar. Okay, those are all some really nice ways to answer that. So um, my surname is uh, Roosevelt. And my given name is Franklin. I'm using an American past famous American president's name here. And, um, of course, the question that uh, you will be asked uh, always is, what should I call you? So don't wait for this question, what should I call you? Just answer it. Okay. So please just call me Frank. Of course, surname is another way to say family name. Okay. So again, uh, repeat after me. What is your full name? My surname is Roosevelt, and my given name is Franklin. Pre please just call me Frank. And by that, we've all just called ourselves one of the more famous American presidents. Okay, and then the next question, it's a common one, um, is where do you live? The examiner will ask you some questions to get to know you better, make you feel confident, comfortable, and some questions on a general topic. So a very common question for an icebreaker in the IELTS interview is where do you live? Shashank Sharma says, I live in New Delhi, India, which is the capital of India. Uh, Shashank, it's a little bit, it's okay, it's a little bit more accurate to say, I live in New Delhi, which is the capital of India. Okay, India is a little bit 
be done in there. Nishant has an exam tomorrow. Let's wish Nishant good luck. Nishant, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Okay. Awaz Aksmedov says, I live in the huge city called Navoy. In fact, uh, it is the biggest city in Uzbekistan and in Central Asia. Really, I didn't know that. Navoy Awaz is the biggest city in Central Asia. All right. Curious what the population must be. Some other big cities in Central Asia. Uh, Rajan says, if I can find Rajan again, says, I reside in Mumbai City, which is a metropolitan city in the western part of India. Uh, Kamlesh, our member, says, I am uh, permanently from Rajasthan, but currently. I live here in Kadi City, which is not as big as Mehsana, even though my city, um, Kadi, is known as the cotton capital of Asia. All right, Kamlesh, not bad. Good answer. Again, students, when you answer this question, where do you live? Often students are like, do you mean like my house or apartment or do you mean my city? So a really clear way to answer this question is answer both of those. So I currently uh, live in a three bedroom uh, family home uh, in the city of Budapest, which is the capital of Hungary uh, here in Central Europe. Okay, so one good way to answer this question of where do you live is uh, express your actual residence, the shelter, where you live, and then also express the location of that shelter. Then it's very clear. It's like, oh, okay, it's where you live and that place is in that place is in that place, right? So um, repeat after me, where do you live? I currently live in a three-bedroom family home in the city of Budapest, which is the capital of Hungary here in Central Europe. Um, and you might even throw in something like, don't overspeak, but you might throw in something like it has a, uh, Budapest has, because we already said Hungary, so Budapest has a population of roughly 3 million people. All right, so here comes my first question to you, viewers. Um, why is it especially good in the icebreakers to remind yourself or to remember uh, throwing in uh, vocabulary like three bedroom or three million people? So why might that be a, an especially good idea for your band score to go up okay and nora's nora colette is doing something similar nora is saying i've been living in tanta that's my hometown while my uh, place of origin is abu dhabi tanta is considered the fifth largest populated area in egypt with about six hundred thousand inhabitants okay yeah, Shang Hung, very good. So Shang Hung right away is cluing in that. That's quantitative information. And Juan Pablo is saying quantitative vocabulary is good. Why? So why is it good? And a few of you got it, and that's fantastic. So why is quantitative vocabulary and information good? Okay, so this is what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to keep it simple. So focus, use quantitative as well as qualitative information in your answers. That's all we're going to do. If you remember doing this in your speaking, it's very likely that you will go up by a band score. Okay, uh, quantitative uh, means using numbers to give clarity to qualitative information. Okay, it's objective. If I say five apples, if it's five apples, OK, 
okay? Five apples is five apples for me, it's five apples for you. Five apples is five apples, okay? Uh, qualitative is using subjective words like many, beautiful, and because humans are emotional beings, we're very subjective beings, um, we love to use qualitative language. So that comes very naturally for us. Using, um, using qualitative language is very, very natural for us. It comes easily. Uh, we're not like robots. We're not like computers. So quantitative language is actually more difficult for us. Um, so an example of that would be like many apples. Um, and many apples uh, would be like, well, how many apples? So how many apples? Five. Fifty. Five hundred. How many apples is many apples for you? I don't know. You got to tell me. If it's five apples, say five apples. I bought many apples. How many did you buy? Five. Okay. So include that into your uh, conversation. Uh, Jigyasu Rathore says, my speaking is on Friday. I can't remember who it was, but somebody's is tomorrow. Um, yeah, use this kind of quantitative uh, language to give clearer responses, to give clear definitions to your ideas. So whenever you can, fit those in, okay? And in the icebreakers, when you remember this, um, it helps you to carry that forward into other parts of the speaking. Okay, uh, here we go. One more icebreaker question before we get into the general part one questions. What do you do at weekends? Okay, what do you do at weekends? Jigyasu, plethora is also qualitative. <laughs> All right, I can see many people had that answer preloaded. Um, here we go. Uh, Pachu says, I usually listen to music, watch movies and visit my friend's house, especially on Saturday. I went to visit my friend's house to watch movies like Forrest Gump. Okay. Pachu, not bad. Yeah. So on the weekend, throw it in there. You have the word Saturday, maybe put Sunday in there as well. Um, Charlie says, well, generally I spend my time with my family and friends. Sometimes I go to the theater to watch movies with my friends. Like last weekend, I watched Joker, one of the most awaited movies of the year. Very good, Charlie. Uh, I am also looking forward to watching Joker. So you are right. It is a very awaited movie. In fact, it means many people are excited and waiting to watch it. Uh, love... Daman says, my full name is Love Preet. How should I tell my name to the examiner? Love Daman, that's at the beginning of the class. You can review it in about an hour. Okay. Abi says, I usually go to the mini stadium with my close friends at the weekend. In addition, sometimes I love to go to ride horses on Sunday because at that time, I really enjoy to relax. Uh, Abi, uh, because does not start a new sentence, and there's no comma, so no period, no comma at the end there, Abi. It's just one sentence. Because is usually used to join sentences. Um, Abi, mini stadium. What is that? What is a mini stadium? Uh, why do you go to a mini stadium? You need to be clear. So, Abi, I usually go to the mini stadium, which fits about 200 people, where local sports teams in the community play. Uh, I go there with my close friends, and we watch our other friends play sports, like cricket and football. Um, also, I like to ride horses on Sunday because that's when I really have time to relax and enjoy this activity. Abi, that is the better answer. Okay. All right. Um, so on uh, Saturdays, I like to go for walks in nature with my family. And on Sunday, 
I usually stay home, read a book, or watch a movie. Uh, I just uh, saw uh, the Secret Life of Pets 2 with my daughter yesterday. Okay, if yesterday was the weekend. Um, so, there we go. Uh, what do you do at weekends? Repeat after me. On Saturdays, I like to go for walks in nature with my family. And on Sunday, I usually stay home, read a book, or watch a movie. I just saw The Secret Life of Pets 2 with my daughter yesterday. Okay, great. So, again, notice how I'm taking the word weekend... And I'm breaking it into Saturday, and I'm breaking it into Sunday. And it is, again, a type of quantitative language because when we say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we know the specific day of the week. Okay? It's an identifier, so we can quantify that, all right? So giving clear, specific, detailed answers is one of the most important steps to getting those high band scores. Okay, students, let's go into these questions. So let's talk about your family. Okay, not my family, so don't say you, you, you. People do that. Uh, talk about your family. So you have to use me, my, myself, okay? So remember, when the examiner says, let's talk about you, use me, my, myself, I, and not you or your, okay? All right, here we go. Question number one, do you have sisters and brothers? If so, how many? Give me a nice answer for this one. Give me a nice answer for this one. Shuvan Pudel says, yep, I've got two younger brothers named James and Sam, and I'm lucky having them as, in, as part of my life. It's a really nice natural answer, okay? I like it. Okay, it's clear. All right. Uh, satisfying time says... Yes, not hopefully satisfying times. That's weird. So just yes, I have a total of three siblings, two brothers and a sister, um, who is the closest to my heart since I'm the youngest in the family and she always takes care of me. Okay, very good. Uh, Sa'ab, yes, I have two siblings. Okay, good start. Sa'ab, who are they? Okay, it's too short. I want to give you more band scores. Show me that you can speak fluently, not over speak, but give me clarity. Dana says, yes, I do have two brothers and three sisters uh, of whom I'm the youngest. I play with them and they always support me in many kinds of situations. Uh, like when I lost my favorite toy or something. So what kind of situation, Dana? You got to give me something there to make it clear. Okay. All right, Vishal Singh says, Sir, if I make mistakes in follow-ups and we speak in part one and two, then how much can we get? Um, that's a little bit off topic, but if you make a lot of mistakes in follow-ups, you will lose band scores, of course, right? So remember that part one and two, um, they're testing mostly to the band seven level. And then part three is really the part in the speaking that separates band six, five, seven from band seven, eight, nine. So you do have to do a good job in part three, okay? We're not covering that today. We're covering part one, but we will have part three later in the week. Zainab says, yes, I have four brothers and three sisters. I'm the fourth one in my line of siblings. Zainab, I'm the fourth one from the oldest in my line of siblings. Okay, Priyanka says, yes, I have two sisters and one brother. I'm the youngest of them all, so I get tons of love from them. Priyanka, good, lucky for you. You're the baby. We also say that in English. We say, I'm the baby in the family. 
okay? Might not be the most conducive label, but we do use it. I'm the baby in the family. Emmanuel Okeke says, yes, I have two brothers and a sister. Their names are Smith, Caleb, and Mary. Smith is the eldest, while Mary is the second born, followed by me, then Caleb. Emmanuel, very good. That's a nice answer. Okay. Indeed. I am fortunate to have two siblings. An older brother named Raphael and a younger one named Mario. They have a great relationship with me and we hang out as often as possible. All right. So repeat after me. Do you have sisters and brothers? If so, how many? Indeed, I am fortunate to have two siblings, an older brother named Raphael and a younger one named Mario. They have a great relationship with me and we hang out as often as possible. All right, great. So for those of you using the word siblings, fantastic, because you're paraphrasing sisters and brothers. So siblings, of course, we don't know the gender, could be girl, could be boy, but that's a paraphrase for sisters and brothers. So here again, using quantitative language, and I'm very happy that many of you used quantitative language here. It was easy to do. And sure, yeah, tell the examiner their names and maybe one other piece of information, like I love them very much, and I'm very happy to have them as a part of my life, as some of you did. Okay. Next question. Open question. What was it like growing up in your family? Ooh, okay. You might need to think there for a moment. So what was it like growing up in your family? Give me a nice uh, answer for that one. Okay, Juan Pablo says, I always had someone to share moments in my family because it's a big family, as I just mentioned. I can say that this was a positive aspect of my upbringing because it helped me develop my social skills. Juan Pablo, that's a really nice answer, okay? A couple of small corrections uh, helped me with my social skills, helped me develop my social skills. And after a large one, Juan Pablo, I would again, uh, because you just talked about how many brothers and sisters you have, I would say, as I just mentioned, okay? Azvir Hussein says, being the elder one, it was always tough to take care of my younger brother during my childhood. And yeah, it gives me immense pleasure to have done this. And also it has helped me to develop my leadership skills, right Azvir? So a little bit of correction there. Mario Luigi says, it has been a great time to grow up in my family and I really appreciate them. I have learned a lot from both my parents and my siblings, especially uh, to be kind to others and help when people need assistance. So Mario, very good start give a little bit more. I love how you realize that this is a really good question to use the present perfect in your answer. Amit Kala said, I had a great time growing up in my family as I grew up um, with my extended family as well, uh, including lots of cousins who played uh, with me and took care of me. Amit, that's very nice. Okay, nice expressive information, accurate grammar. Um, and uh, you're using some good past tense there. All right, let's take one more. Um, Nora Khaled, I am very fortunate 
to grow up in such a tight, typical family whose members always stayed in touch with each other through good and bad moments, and we supported each other. And this has uh, nurtured me to become a strong individual. Nora Khaled, really nice answer as well. Okay, so... Most of the time, it was very enjoyable growing up uh, in my family as I always had someone to play with. Both of my brothers are close in age. So we were often uh, very competitive with each other and this has helped to shape my personality in becoming a driven and successful individual. I am grateful for for having my parents and siblings as part of my life. Okay, so that's my answer. Horribly misspelling that word. There we go. Um, here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, what was it like growing up in your family? Most of the time, it was very enjoyable growing up in my family as I always had someone to play with. Both of my brothers are close in age, so we were often very competitive with each other. And this has helped shape my personality in becoming a driven and successful individual. I'm grateful for having my parents and siblings as part of my life. All right, great. So again, explanation uh, with details and clarity. Okay, that's what gets you those high band scores. Next question, and very good for those of you who realize that present perfect is very useful in this uh, response, has helped me shape my personality and becoming a driven individual. I'm using it there. Next question. Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? If not, where are they from? Okay. Are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? If not, where are they from? Okay. Satisfying Time says, we are 100% Algerian family. My grandparents are Algiers from the, cap or from the capital of Algiers, but my parents decided to move to Socoraz due to the availability of work. Okay. Uh, Carolina Asano, good to see you in class. No, they aren't. My father's family and also my father are from Santander, which is a north city in Colombia. And my mother's uh, family and my mother are from Cali, which is a south city in uh, Colombia. My, okay, Carolina. So good. Um, sounds like both of your parents are from Colombia. Are you living in a different country? Carolina, because here we're talking about the same country, not the same city. Okay, careful. Don't confuse country with city. Otherwise, you will lose marks. All right. Okay. Uh, Shuvan Pudel says, yeah, my parents and grandparents are from the same country as I. They, too, were born in Nepal. And I am extremely lucky to have them as part of my life. Uh, they played a crucial role in shaping 
my personality. Very good, Shuvam. And good for you to use what you're learning in class right away. Fantastic. Mario Luigi says, my grandparents are from the same country and have been living here for a long time. Also, my grandpa uh, lived in other countries. Uh, so he loved, or my grandma, sorry, Luigi, Mario. Uh, also, my grandma uh, has visited other countries, so she loves her country. Mario, that last part with your grandma is a little bit unclear. You want to think about how to clarify that, okay? Uh, Zareen Tasneem says, My parents and grandparents are from a different country. Since my father is in the army, uh, he ended up growing up in California, and they are from Las Vegas. Zareen, very interesting. Where do you live now? Okay, that makes it difficult for me to know. Xiao Li says, yes, both of my parents and grandparents are from the same country as me, but in my country's history, we separated into two nations. So my grandfather... Uh, died in North Korea. Seo Lee, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, that's very interesting, of course, right? So during their lifetime, borders changed. And so your father or your grandfather uh, became North Korean and your parents and you became South Korean. Very interesting, Soy. Yeah, that's history for you. Uh, and if you can explain that clearly, that will definitely get you some band scores, okay? All right. Um, no, both of my parents are from Hungary, but I grew up in Victoria, which is one of the western most cities of Canada. All right. So again, are your parents and grandparents um, from the same country as you? If not, where are they from? Uh, no, both of my parents... And one set of grandparents are from Hungary. My father's parents are from the Ukraine. But I grew up in Victoria, which is one of the westernmost cities of Canada. So one more time, are your parents and grandparents from the same country as you? If not, where are they from? No, both of my parents, both my parents and one set of grandparents are from Hungary. My father's parents are from the Ukraine, but I grew up in Victoria, which is one of the westernmost cities of Canada. Okay, all right. Well, let's take one more question here. Uh, why do you think family is important? Here we go. Why do you think family is important? All right. Let's see some answers coming up. Uh, Poloniex is asking, hi, sir, is this sentence grammatically correct? Currently, I am doing business studies, which specializes in retail and wholesale. Pull an X note. It's a little bit off grammatically. I just corrected it in real time. Okay, so pay attention to that. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's go with Sadaf Vakyasalvi. Well, me and my parents were born and brought up in Pakistan, but my grandparents... Uh, from my paternal and maternal uh, 
side migrated from India in the 1950s. Uh, Sadaf, that's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. If there, if all your grandparents came from India, then you don't need to say my paternal and maternal side. Just say all of my grandparents. Uh, Samara, uh, Samara Brown says, family is important because it provides love, support, and a framework of values for each of its members. Family members teach each other, serve one another, and share life's joys and sorrows. Samara, that is a textbook answer. Literally, it looks like uh, we read that out of a textbook. Why is family important? It's a very good answer. Um, Samara, I might actually give a slight example uh, to boost my band score. So something like family is important because it uh, provides love, support, and a framework of values for each of its members. Uh, my father has taught me to be honest and my mother has taught me to be hardworking. Uh, family members teach each other and they serve one another. Uh, in fact, I needed uh, help with my uh, final exams just last week and my brother's uh, helped my, me to study. Okay, so something like that. I would I would bring it a little bit more into the real world, Samara. Otherwise, it sounds like you're reading from a dictionary. Um, but it is a good answer. Okay. Uh, Suvam uh, Pudel says, Family is important because it provides love, support, and a framework of values to each of its members. Uh, <laughs> Suvam, uh, it's starting to sound like those answers are coming out of a quick Google job. If you're Googling, <laughs> just remember the examiner will catch it just like I do. Okay. Uh, Nora says family is a, a precious environment in everyone's life, even among animals, uh, because this creates strong bonds um, which creates uh, an environment where people feel safe and confident to express themselves. Nora, that's what you're trying to say there, okay? Zareen says, uh, family plays a vital role in shaping each individual's character. I share a very deep bond with my parents, and I believe that today, whatever milestones I have achieved is because of their guidance. Zareen, that is a beautiful answer. I adjusted a little bit the language um, and replaced a couple of uh, words. Bind 10 says, well, well, family is vital. Vital is a good word, students, because vital means important for life. We don't say very vital because it's either very important or vital. Vital means very important. So don't use very vital, it's weird. Uh, Bind Tan says, well, family is vital for both society and the individual. It is the only relationship we have that is always ready to support, love, and care for us. We put our family first before anyone else. Okay, very good. So, yeah, family is vital both to for an individual, for each individual and society as a whole. Indeed, family is the foundation of society. It is critical to develop respect, love, and ethics towards those we love and our fellow man. I'm certain that my positive traits of hard work and selflessness have been instilled in me by my parents uncles, I don't have any aunts, and grandparents. All right, here we go. Repeat after me. Why do you think family is important? Family is vital both for each individual and society as a whole. Indeed, family is the foundation of society. It is critical to develop respect, 
love and ethics towards those we love and our fellow men. I'm certain that my positive traits of hard work and selflessness have been instilled in me by my parents, uncles, and grandparents. Okay, students, some beautiful answers today. Remember to use those quantitative numbers uh, to express your ideas clear, be specific, give examples, give deep explanations so you can get those high band scores. We just released over the last week uh, two full HD speaking uh, interview videos. One is with a candidate from India who would score a band nine for his performance on the IELTS speaking interview. The other one is one we just released yesterday with an Italian gentleman who would score a band eight. Watch those videos and notice how much detail and quantitative language they give in their responses in part one, two, and three. Okay, that's all for today, ladies and gents. You've done a fantastic job. Tomorrow, I will start with task two for members at 1330, followed by a reading passage, uh, techniques, questions, and strategies for everyone at this time. Again, remember, students, for six original practice exams, a fully interactive course, and over 100 hours of video lessons, including lots of HD videos, visit and join us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS. That website looks like this. Click that red button to join. Spend a couple dollars. Help us help you. Uh, spending money on structured quality materials is a good investment, especially with an exam that's so important, like IELTS, which is expensive as well. Uh, general version, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Green background. Click that red button to join. Fully responsive, ultra modern, always adding new content and material to our websites. If you ever have questions, you can email me. That's it for today. I hope to see all of you tomorrow. If it's late in your country, sweet dreams, get a good rest, start tomorrow fresh and full of positive energy. Bye for now. Much love.